All right, good morning. Welcome to Morning Moments. As you can see, you've got Brett Beal here today who's going to be uh, sharing a few, couple of things with you. Pastor is going to take the rest of the week off. We're going to have a few different of the pastoral staff that are going to come through and give uh, share some thoughts with you. So I just want to, first of all, man, as I'm preparing and taking video and then I'm going to edit a video and post it, I, I realize how much work it takes just to do one of these and pastor is doing this five times a week on top of all of the messages that he speaks and everything else that he does is just a lot, a lot, a lot of work that pastor does to have these things. And so I hope that you uh, are grateful. Um, I'm very thankful for all the work that pastor does. And uh, if you think about it, uh, shoot him a text or an email or something and just let him know that you're thinking of him and praying for him and uh, grateful for all the things that he does because it is a lot of work. Um, now, I do uh, just, um, before we get into what we're going to talk about today, I have a couple of things I wanted to say. First of all, I wanted to say happy birthday uh, to my wife, Jennifer. Uh, it's her birthday today, and she is, I ain't going to tell you how old she is, but she's still very young, uh, very young to me, and I'm very grateful that God allowed me to uh, meet her and find her way back in 2002. Uh, I met her and was married a few years later, and we'll share our uh, 16th wedding anniversary in just a couple of days here as well. And I'm just very thankful um, for my wife and all that she does. It's, most of you know uh, she is just an encourager. Um, if you need encouragement, um, she's the one to go to and she can uh, brighten your day and help you out. And she's helped so many uh, young people and um, um, other fellow Christians throughout the years. I'm just very, um, honestly, uh, jealous of how good she is with people. Uh, she's I've learned a lot just from watching her over the years. And so um, happy birthday, Jen, and I'm uh, very grateful that I'm uh, married to you. Um, before we get into this, I'm going to make a fool of myself. I got this um, game that I got uh, for our teenagers. And this there's some glasses here. Um, I'm going to look like a fool. Look in here. All right. Let's see these glasses. Now, these glasses are actually... Um, these perspective glasses, they change your perspective. So everything, when I put these glasses on, gets flipped. So you you guys are upside down, the whole room is upside down, and it completely flips your perspective. Um, and you play this game where you try to do different things with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a piece of paper, I'm gonna try to take my pen here, and I'm gonna try to uh, draw just a simple stick house with uh, my pen here. So let's see uh, how I do. Okay, don't laugh too much um, at, at this, all right? All right, so here we go. Everything's upside down, all right? Okay, on your mark, get set, go. All right, I got it. All right, I, I'm, I'm already giving up. I can't even get it. <laughs> <laughs> not a not a very good house right there, man. Alright. I was making fun of the teenagers when they were doing this and now I'm not I'm not doing too good. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do one more. This time I'm just gonna try to write a word, okay? I'm gonna write um, Jesus, okay? I'm gonna write Jesus. So here we go. Ready? Go. All right, there's there's uh, Jesus. Not too good there. All right, I'm gonna that's going in the trash right now. Gone because I <laughs> wow. Um, so I, we play this game with the teenagers and we try to see who can do it the fastest, and it usually gets some pretty good results <laughs> like that. Um, I'm not gonna make too much fun of them the next time they do it because that was that was that was difficult. That was not easy. Um, but I wanted to show you that because of what we're gonna to talk to about today. I wanna to talk to you about that word perspective. Um, if you have your Bibles in Isaiah chapter 55, um, verse uh, eight, Isaiah 55 verse eight, we're gonna be there in just a second. But I wanna to talk to you about that word perspective. Those glasses that we have here, you put those glasses on and it flips everything upside down to where it is very difficult to do 
anything and to write it properly or to draw something was, I mean, especially for me, maybe if I, I, I would have done better if I just would have closed my eyes and did it. Um, I probably would have done a lot better than actually trying to, there was just a disaster there. Uh, but because my perspective was shifted and completely flipped upside down, it made it very difficult to do a very mundane, simple task. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about that. The, um, the definition for perspective, just a very simple definition of perspective, is that uh, it's, a, it's a point of view. Just a point of view. So when you have a perspective about things, you have a point of view what, that you are looking at something. For example, with these glasses, when I looked in these glasses, my perspective or my point of view got complete, completely flipped upside down and I had a completely different perspective on things. The Bible says in Isaiah uh, 55 and in verse 8, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Um, I know that you uh, have heard this before, but it bears reiterating and uh, talking about again and again that, you know, God's ways are above our ways. God's thoughts are above our thoughts and how he views things are completely different than the ways that we view things many times. You know, God's perspective on things is much different than our perspective on things. And if you've been a Christian very long, you know that that comes up quite a bit because you look at things sometimes like, man, what was God thinking? Well, he, I don't know what God was thinking, but you know why? Because his perspective is coming from a very, very different point of view um, than what mine is. And so when perspectives differ, man, I'm going to trust God's perspective over my perspective. You know, sometimes we look at things and we don't understand or we don't even value um, things. If I if I look and see, I think right here I've got this uh, this postcard right here. This postcard is just a couple of frogs um, on a, a leaf there or on a stick. Now this uh, card, it if you look at it, you say it's just a postcard. But I've had this postcard hung up here in my office for over a year, and it means quite a bit to me. You see. For you, it's just a postcard, and look, oh, oh, you went to Belize, so it's a postcard from so with some frogs on it from Belize. But to me, it's I, has a lot of meaning to it because this postcard was uh, given to me by all of the teenagers that went on the uh, Belize missions trip that we had, and hopefully, man, we're going to be going on some more missions trips coming up in 2021. We're already trying to work that out, but we went on this missions trip, and on the back, they all signed it and wrote some nice things here, and this has a lot of um, sentimental meaning to me where somebody may look at this card and they just say, okay, it's a postcard. What's a big deal? Why is that even, why do you even have that up in your office? Um, but it has a lot of sentimental meaning to me. And so your perspective versus my perspective on this are just different. And, you know, we're going to come across that in many areas in our life where perspectives on things are different. And, you know, we have got to just, um, realize that when we have a different perspective than what God has, that maybe we just need to sit back and trust God. You know, one of my favorite uh, artists, uh, my wife likes to go and see different artwork and stuff, and we've, um, you know, when you could actually do this, we'd go to some of these uh, museums like the Getty Museum in Los Angeles, the Free Museum, it's uh, great, a lot of different art there. And my favorite artist is by a painter uh, named Monet. And I really love his art because when you get up close to it, you're within just a couple of feet of it. It looks like just smudges um, on the canvas. I mean, big glops of paint here and there. And looking at it within just a couple of feet, you can't even sometimes tell what he was trying to draw. But when you back up and you get back four, five, six feet, you get a little better perspective. When you get a different point of view, it completely changes and you see this beautiful uh, piece of art that close up looks like nothing but smudges. You can't even tell, but when you back up, it turns into this beautiful piece of art. And you know, um, sometimes that's how God is in our lives. We look at things and we think of, oh man, it's nothing but junk. Really, man, my life is a mess right now. And God says, no, 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 I've got a purpose and a plan for this. You might think of this as just a big smudge mark in your life. But 
if you just wait and you can look back on this whole thing like I see it, I see a perspective, uh, God sees a perspective that me and you don't see, and he says, it's all part of the plan. You may not like it. You know, sometimes we go through things in our life where there's this big smudge mark that God puts or this big glop of paint in our life, and we look to God and say, God, why? Why do I have to go through this sickness or this hardship or uh, somebody coming after me or uh, something going on with my family and whatever it may be, it's difficult and it's hard. And when we look at it from our own perspective, it looks like nothing but a mess. You know, uh, I've got some pictures here that you could probably tell me what each of these things are. Um, if you can see that right there, what is that? All right, this is just, that's actually an old uh, washing machine. There's even got the top pulled off of it. Um, on top of this washing machine there, they're on, the, on top of it, I think is actually maybe like an old uh, microwave, something like that. It's just old uh, electronic junk. I mean, what are you going to do with that? Nothing but scrap it and throw it away. Anybody know what that is? What's that right there? You know, uh, anybody who's older knows what that is. When we were in Ghana, everybody used these. This is just a handheld radio there. I don't think it is. It doesn't look like it even has. Yeah, there's not even a CD player, not even a tape player. It's just a radio. Um, you know, we saw these in Ghana all over the place. People would take their radios everywhere. But this is an old broken radio. Most people, uh, kids don't even know what this is. If you show this to them, probably half the kids won't even be able to guess that. Um, what are those? Let's just, it's just old electronic junk. Let's see what else we've got here. And what is, here, here's just a pile of electronic junk. I mean, we've got here, we've got an old TV, we've got old computers, we've got um, old radios, um, old speakers. We've just got all kinds of, just a pile of junk that's sitting right there. And looking, if you look at all those different pictures there, all there is is just an old bit of electronic junk, right? Nothing uh, really, really notable. Um, in mine, yours eyes, it's just trash, you know? Um, it's uh, in, in biblical speak, it's just a marred vessel. You know, God says that uh, we're like a, a marred piece of pottery, a broken piece of pottery. That's all that these things are. But you know, when you take all of these pieces of rubbish and trash, and you're looking at it like this, you say, this is nothing but trash. But in the right person's hands, all of this trash gets moved around, it gets placed in certain uh places and then when you come around and you look at it from the proper perspective you get a picture that looks like this and when you stand in just the right spot the artist gets you to see a picture of this person that really is pretty pretty amazing and so the artist takes rubbish trash puts it in a certain order and then in the end a very beautiful picture comes from it you know, isn't that fitting of what God uh, does with us? You know, our perspective sometimes, we look at what's going on in our life as this is just rubbish. This is trash. This is a difficult time. This is a thing I don't want. Nothing. Why, God, are you putting me through this thing in my life? And God says, well, well I've got a plan. And he's just, I'm putting that right here. I'm putting this piece over here. I'm going to bring this difficulty in your life here. I'm going to... Uh, place you over here. I'm going to have this health problem that maybe you don't really want to deal with here. And he puts these different things in your life that looking at it from your perspective, you say, this is, this is, I can't even handle this. I don't want this in my life. Let me get rid of it. And if you would just stop and trust God, the Bible says that, uh, it, the Bible says in Jeremiah 18, verse 6, it says, As the clay is in the potter's hands, so are ye in my hand. And God says, man, I've got you. I've got you right in my hands. I'm putting things right in order how I want them to be. Because in the end, I've got something great planned for you. This wonderful picture. Now, the problem with that is that as I'm going through those difficult things, I look and I see this piece of trash in my life. And I say, oh man, you see this, you see this old radio and that's, it's broken. It's no, no good anymore. I don't like this. 
I'm just gonna get rid of it. And you throw it out. Or you say, you know, I'm gonna move it. I don't like how God is moving in my life right now, so I'm just gonna move things. I'm gonna move myself. I'm gonna move things out of order. I'm gonna get rid of things. And you're gonna try, you start taking over the artist's plan and doing it on your own. You know, if I went to that um, art uh, place that had the picture of Tesla and I said, ah, you know, I don't like where this piece is and this uh, radio is or this um, old washing machine. I'm just going to move it this way and this way and it'll make it look better. By the end and once I've moved things around, it's going to look like nothing but junk because I've changed everything around and now the artist's true intent and plan for it is no longer good and valid. And, you know, we do that with God. We don't trust the artist. We don't trust uh, the, the potter. We don't trust the one who has made us, the one who formed us, the one who gave us life, the one who knows us, who knows everything about us, and yet we still look and say, no, I know better. I'm not, I'm not going to trust you today, God. I, I got my own perspective on things, and so I'm going to change things based upon on what I see. And you know, we have this micro perspective. We, it's like we're looking at the picture through this little pinhole while God looks back and he sees the whole thing. And if we would just take time to have the proper perspective on things, God wants to use us for a great and mighty work. The problem is when we stop trusting the artist that he's got a purpose and a plan.